Hi everyone, Brad Drew here. Recently I had the opportunity to uh, record a, a free Snapseed webinar. I uh, did this last week. We had about 60 people join in the call uh, and give me the opportunity to share a number of the things that I do with the uh, great Snapseed app. Um, I know it's a, a very popular app and so I'm sure many of you are uh, familiar with it and so some of what I cover may be a review for you but I do hope I've uh, opened up a couple of things here that maybe you didn't know about but um, I hope you'll enjoy it um, take take some time if you can to um, check out my website at raddrewphotography.com uh, you'll find some other tutorials on related topics uh, the iPhone photography as well as some uh, some things that with uh, Topaz software for uh, your your big camera uh, work that you might do as well. So here you go. Enjoy, and uh, I'll see you next time. I'm going to start by um, grabbing a photo from my camera roll. So I'm going to start. This is the, what you see when you open Snapseed for the first time. Now I know many of you have already used this quite a bit, and so this, some of this is going to be a review, but hopefully I'll be showing you still some things that you might not have discovered about the app yet. So I'm going to tap the Open Photo button, and I'm going to say let's go get a picture from the device, which could say from the camera roll. So I tap on that, it takes me out to my camera roll, and I'm going to scroll down here because I've got a... Um, a little window or an album down here where I've put some images for today's webinar. Um, I'm going to start with one um, that uh, will allow me to show a few different things with what I do. So I'm going to pull this one up. So you notice I selected it and now I have to click on use in order to use this image in Snapseed. So I'll tap on use and there's my image. I'm going to turn this sideways and it should be a little bigger maybe for you. So um, this is what it looks like when you bring it into Snapseed. So just a quick review of what's up here on the screen right now. We have the open button up here in the upper left so if you wanted to open a different photograph you would tap on that and when you tap on that open button you have these different options that you can choose to um, retrieve an image. You can even take an image with the Snapseed camera if you like open latest image means that it will open the last image that was added to your camera roll. So if you've just uh, copied something in there, you, you don't have to go out to the camera roll and search for it. Just, just click on open latest image and it'll pop that one in there. Um, so those, those are all really useful um, ways of accessing Snapseed. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention down here in the lower left, there's a histogram. Now, if you're looking at Snapseed and you don't see that, you might see something that looks like this. And all I did was tap on the screen. For those of you who do processing in Photoshop, for example, where you're using um, where you're using that information that you get from the um, histogram, this is a really useful tool. If you're not familiar with it, don't worry about it. It's not something you need to know. It's something you might want to put on your list of things to explore in the future. Absolutely not necessary, but useful if you know how to read it. Um, the next thing we have up here in the upper right is the save icon. And this is what we're going to click when we're all done with our changes and we're ready to, to save uh, to the camera roll. Next to that, you see a little box that says zero. As we work in Snapseed and make adjustments, the, that number for, is going to grow from zero to however many changes we make. So this is the, the place that shows what some people call them stacks, where to me they look like layers that you would see in another application like Photoshop. Each of the adjustments we make is going to go into a layer that we can go into and work with, after, you know, can, can continually go back to. Um, this icon right here is something that's new in Snapseed, this little booklet here on the, on the right. Um, if you tap on that, it's a link out to some tutorials and some information about Snapseed and some examples of what can be done with it, and it's something you might want to explore at some point. Um, this and this, this uh, button right here, the, the pencil icon or stylus icon, uh, is where we go to get all of our different tools. So I'm going to tap on that right now, and you can see we've got like 10 different, uh, oops, 10 different toolboxes here. 
And then below that, we have a host of different filters uh, that we can use to process our images. So let's just go back for just a second. And I, I just want to talk about where I start when I'm about to process an image. The first thing I do is assess the image for what needs to be done. So as I look at this picture, I'm telling myself that, um, oops, sorry, hold on a second here. There we go. I'm telling myself that the first thing I need right off the bat to do is level this horizon. Um, when I took the picture, obviously, I was tilting to the right, and I don't have a straight horizon. So that's one thing I'm going to fix. And there's a tool in Snapseed that we're going to use for that. Um, the next thing as I look at it, I notice that I've got this, this framing issue over here where I've got something like a pole from a, the awning or something is, it, is there, and I don't want it there. I want to get rid of that. It's, it's really distracting to me. Um, I also noticed that there's some debris in the in the water here. Now, if there that's a leaf, I believe, and if there were a bunch of leaves and it made an interesting pattern there, I might leave it. But because it's so close to the edge and it's just a white spot, really, it's pulling my eye away from the other elements in the image that I want to show. So I am going to take that out of there. So those are some of the things right off the bat that I want to do to this image. So let's start... Um, by going to the, uh, the thing we'll use to correct the horizon. So I'm going to open this up. There, there are two things you can use to correct the horizon, but one is definitely better than the other. Um, when I started using this, I used rotate all the time because it made sense. You want to rotate the picture, right? You want to um, rotate it to level the horizon. Well, when I tap on rotate, Let's watch what happens. I'm going to tap on the rotate box here. And well, sometimes it does it automatically for you. In this case, it didn't. Um, but let's see. Ah! So if I take my finger and drag across back and forth on the screen, I can use the grid lines to help me level my horizon. Now, before I release, when I release my finger, it's going to crop the image. Do you see all the parts of the image that are outside of the photo cropping box? Those parts, if we use rotate, those parts of our images are, images going to, are going to be cropped out. So what we're actually doing, in effect, is decreasing the size of our file. So for those of us who print and want to have as large a file as possible, this is really not the way we want to go. Even though it's very effective at leveling the horizon, it's degrading the quality of our image size just a little bit. So watch what happens when I release my finger from the screen. Notice how, oops, did it do it? Let me do that again. So there's where we want to be. I'm going to release my finger. Okay, so when I click the check mark, I'm going to tap on the check mark, and it cropped away those parts of the image. So I'm going to go back into that change we just made. Notice how our little box up here now says 1. Well, if I tap on that, here's our first stack. It tells us we made a rotate adjustment. Well, I'm going to open it up by tapping this little carrot here, and I have two options. I can throw it away or I can go in and make additional adjustments. In this case, I'm going to throw it away because I want to show you a better way to level your horizon. So I'm going to hit the trash can and I just threw that away. So now I have to go up here to this little arrow in the left to go back to my home screen. So we're back to zero here. We, we threw away that rotate change and we're not going to use it. So instead, I'm going to go back to the pencil and I'm going to go to transform this one right here. Now, transform has a number of different things that are useful. You can adjust things on the vertical and horizontal perspective, but you can also um, level your horizon. So if I take my finger on the screen and slide up, these are the three things I can adjust, the vertical perspective, the horizontal perspective, and I can rotate. So I'm going to stop on rotate, 
Now, when I put my finger on the screen, notice down here it's telling us it's zero degrees rotation at the moment. I'm going to put my finger on the screen and I'm going to slide it and now you see how I'm rotating the image. Now, look at the image now. Do you see the little black triangles that appear on each corner? Instead of cropping data away from the image, it's going to use content aware technology to fill those areas um, to look just like the rest of the picture. So we're not we're not degrading the size and quality of our image. So I'm going to go ahead and release my finger and look at that. It automatically filled them in and in most cases I defy you to find any trace of the fact that it did that. So now we've got our, our image rotated the way we want it and I'm going to click the check mark to commit to those changes. And I'm using that word commit to changes very um, intentionally um, because so far we haven't saved anything. All we've done is make adjustments within some of these toolboxes and we've committed to those changes, but we haven't saved it back to the camera roll yet. And I don't usually save until I'm done with all the things that I want to do. Okay, so we've leveled the horizon and now we want to get rid of um, this area over here and this debris in the foreground. Well, I'm going to tap on the pencil again, and this time I'm going to go out and use the healing brush. Now, many of you, we've all used these kinds of tools and other apps, and uh, if you use Photoshop, there, there are ones where you can tap and remove things. Well, this is, a, this is Snapseed's version of it. It's great if you have very simple things to remove. If you have a very complex removal job, like maybe a wire running through some trees and you want it to be really precise, there are some better apps to use for healing than Snapseed. But for things like removing that leaf down in the bottom here and probably taking this out over here on the side, it's going to be fine. So I'm going to tap on the healing brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is take my fingers and increase the, the size of the screen. Now you see the, the white circle? That's my healing brush. There's no way to make it bigger or larger. You simply have to make the picture behind the brush larger and relatively then the brush gets smaller and smaller. So I'm going to get it down to where it's just about the size of what I need to remove. I'm going to come down here and tap on it and it's going to take a couple taps and well it's trying to refill. See it's, it's picking this up and filling with it so let me back out and start all over with that again. So there we are. So I'm going to make this even bigger and I'm going to come down here and sort of paint across there and that's much better. So now I can um, go back down and you can see it's gone. So now I'm going to come over here to this side and I, oops, and I, I want to get the um, this little post that's over here on the edge of our frame. I want to get rid of it. So again I'm going to make it as large as I can take my finger and paint right along that edge and there it goes and that's pretty good. Now when you're doing this um, you definitely want to use the zoom, zoom uh, capability so you can get close. Some people like to use a stylus for when they're doing this kind of work as well. It allows you to be a little bit more precise so you might want to consider that. Um, and that's it and if you want to undo something you've done you've got a little undo button you can tap and it it will put, put it back and, and back and forth. So that's pretty much how that works. So again, for simple things, it's great. Um, so now we've committed to those changes. So now we have a two up here and you can see that we have, uh, we've done some healing and we've done some transforming. So now I'm ready to get into actually adjusting the, the image itself and its tonal quality. So I'm going to tap on the pencil again and this time I'm going to go to tune image and when I open up Tune Image and drag my finger up and down, you can see that we can adjust all these different variables. We've got brightness, contrast, saturation, ambiance, which is sort of a secret sauce we'll look at in a minute, highlights, shadows, and then at the very bottom is warmth. So we can warm up uh, the image or cool it off. So wherever, whenever I do an image, I, I almost always use Tune Image and I start 
with ambiance. I don't start with brightness or contrast or saturation because ambiance is actually going to make some of those adjustments as part of what it does. And I, I kind of like starting there. So I'm going to set it on ambiance. And you notice all of these items default to zero when you come in. And that's pretty much the way it is with all the tools with the exception of one. And I'll share that with you here in a minute. So we've just opened this up for ambiance. And we have, um, I take my finger on the screen, you notice it's at zero right now, and I'm going to take my finger and run it all the way up to 100. So I just maxed, maxed it out at 100. Now, if I take my finger and press it on the screen, you actually have this little button up here, but you don't have to tap that button. You can put your finger anywhere on the screen, and you can see before and after. So let's do that again. There's before and there's after. So I usually start by ramping it up to 100, but then I look very carefully at my clouds and my sky, and I notice I've got some dark shadows around some of my clouds. So I'm going to back off my ambiance, maybe down to about 80 or so, and eliminate some of that, or 75. And you can see, so there, there's our before, and there's our after, so it's a, uh, that's a little better. So the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to leave that at 74, and still we haven't uh, committed anything yet because we're still in this tune image palette. So now I'm going to go down to highlights. Now highlights, think of it as an, a brightness slider, um, but just for the bright spots in the picture. So for example, at the very beginning up here, one of the things we can adjust is brightness. When we use that, it's a global adjustment. When we, when we adjust brightness, we're adjusting the shadows and the bright spots and everything. But when we use highlights, we're adjusting for only the bright spots. So this area right up here primarily and maybe this little, these little light spots at the top here. So watch what happens. If I I'm going to use my fingers to just zoom in a little bit, if I increase the highlights, I'm going to jack them up to 100. Look what happens to my clouds. It's, they're all blown out. I've lost whatever detail I might have had. It's gone. So clearly not the look we want. If I go back to zero, you can see where we're starting. What ambiance lets you do, or I'm sorry, what highlights lets you do is work into the negative. So if I slide to the left, watch my clouds now. Look at the detail that I'm getting in, those, in the clouds. And I've only gone down about 30 40% or whatever. If I look at this, there's before and there's after. So suddenly now I've got a little bit more detail um, in, my, in my clouds um, and so I'm starting to get closer to what, I'm, what I want with this image. Now I'm going to go down to shadows and shadows, just like highlights, it's a brightness slider for the shadows. So I'm going to zoom back in on this. So a lot of times you want to increase lighten the shadows so that you can see detail in dark areas and that that can work so if I if I raise the the brightness up you can see that some of the shadowy areas have gotten brighter and that may be what you're going for you may want to do that what I find with much of what I do if I start at zero I like to back the shadows down and darken them maybe 25 percent or so and I think it adds a little drama to the image now again each image is different, um, but that's how I like to use, I like to darken my shadows in most instances. So there's our before and there's our after. So you can see this image is beginning to you know, develop. Now, for those of you who look at the histogram, you'll notice over here on the left, we're starting to approach that left edge of our histogram. So we're starting to lose some of the detail in those shadows. I'm not terribly worried about it, but that's something. Watch when I see when I decrease the shadows and see that line going down on the left. So we're just, but it's not all the way to the left, so I don't think we're losing a whole lot. But it's just one of the ways the histogram can be useful for those of you, for those of you who like to use one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark, and. Um, Oh, not yet. One last thing I want to do. I'm going to go down to warmth, and this is one of those. This is one of those features that you know, or adjustments that 
really is up to you in terms of artistic in input, but I want to just see what happens if I just slightly warm this up a tiny bit. It's a bright sunny day, and I'm, you know I remember what it was like when I was there. If I warm it up just a little, I'm getting a little of the rich tones out of the wood here, I'm getting a little more richness here, and a little bit more here. So I kind of like that. So there's my before, and there's after. So you can see we have a much um, richer image. And what I like to look at the foreground here where the, the water is, where we're seeing into the water. Here's before, and there's after. So we're really getting a lot more detail um, in that foreground area as well. So now I'm ready to commit to those changes, and I'm going to click the check mark. So now, now we've got a number three up here, which tells us if we tap on it, we've adjusted for... Um, the, the horizon line, we've taken some stuff out with the healing brush, and then we've made our tune image adjustments, which include the ambiance, shadows, uh, highlights, and warmth. So now, um, the next thing that I'm that I typically do with all of my images is sharpen uh, and adjust the structure. So again, we go down to the pencil, and that what you'll find the sharpening and structure adjustments in the details toolbox. So I'm going to tap on details, and again, if I move my finger up and down, um, you can see that we have two things we can adjust here, structure and sharpening. And I've found after doing this many times, you can jack these all the way up to 100, but anything over about 25 and you're starting to risk um, having a poor quality uh, adjustment. So you're going to get your images get a little bit crispy, if you will. Um, okay. Um, sorry, guys. I just noticed that one of our participants doesn't have any video. I'm not sure how to help her. It looks like everyone else seems to be doing well. Um, Okay. All right. So, um, so I'm going to adjust my structure up to about 25. Actually, it's probably not that much. Probably about 21 or so. And you can also take your fingers and zoom in and watch very carefully what's happening when you make these adjustments. And and I encourage you to do that. Again, I've found that I don't usually go ever more than about 22 or three at the most. So those two adjustments have been made. So there's before and there's after. Now, I'm looking at the, these on my screen. They're a very, very subtle adjustment. But I assure you that when you print this image or blow it up at, at all, those adjustments are going to make a huge difference in, in what you see. So now I'm going to click the check mark and commit to those changes. So now the next thing I'm going to do, and this is one that I've, I've recently started using quite a bit, um, it's down in the filters, and it's called Tonal Contrast. And I'm going to just tap it to open it. Now, what Tonal co Contrast is letting you do is make adjustments to the high tones, the medium, and the low tones in the image. Um, it's the, the closest thing I can compare it to is like a clarity setting that we have in some other apps that kind of is a one-button push, and it makes those adjustments. This allows you to fine tune each of the, the three tones. Now, what's different about tonal contrast compared to all the other tools in Snapseed is that when you open tonal contrast, instead of defaulting to zero, it defaults to 30, 50, 30. So if I put my finger down here and drag up, you can see it's defaulting at 30 for high tones, 50 in mid tones, and 30 for low tones. So when you open this thing up, um, when you open this thing up, you're already you've already got an adjustment there that you haven't intentionally made, but it's there for you. So the reason I mention that is because before I do anything, before I change anything or whatever, I'm going to take my finger and tap it on the on the screen so I can see the before. So there's before. And there's after. Let me do that again. There's before, and there's after. So it's a very subtle adjustment. 
So I could go in and, and make adjustments to those three values, and sometimes I do, but most of the time I find that it's really pretty well, pretty good to write from the right out of the box. Um, but with one caveat, I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark here. We've just committed to those changes. Now, we just committed to two different things. A minute ago we did our details, which is our sharpening, and then we did tonal contrast. And those two things, the, the only problem with both of those is that they're, again, they're global. So we have made those changes to the entire image. Well, typically we don't like to sharpen and, and apply structure to sky and clouds, but we did in this case. And we also did the same thing with tonal contrast. The tonal contrast is up here in the clouds and the sky too. I don't like what it's doing to my, to my sky. It makes it noisy. What I'm going to do is fix that by masking. So this is a little weird thing in Snapseed. It's not real well known. It's not easy to find. But if you go back up here to your, your stacks, tap on that, I'm going to go into details first. And when I open up details, there's this little arrow here. I'm going to tap on it. And I have three things I can do. I can throw this away altogether. I can go in and make more adjustments, or I can do the masking. So I'm going to tap on the masking brush, and you open it up, and you notice down here it says details 100. So it's telling me that um, it's going to apply 100% of the, um, the sharpening and structure adjustments that I made, if, and I'm going to tell it where to put it. So, if I take my finger on the screen, I'm going to paint in, and I'm telling Snapseed by this by painting this in, sharpen the area that I'm painting and leave the other area alone. Now, this little button right here, if I tap on that, it's what turns on the paintbrush so I can see what I'm doing. That's all it's doing is allowing you to see where you're touching and where you're painting, and I think it's essential to see what you're doing. Um, again, you might use a stylus for this. So I'm going to go ahead and commit to that, and now um, we've applied our structure and sharpening just to this area, not the sky. I'm going to do the same thing to tonal contrast because, again, it's doing the same thing. It's giving us noise in our sky, so I'm only going to put the tonal contrast where I want it, which is down here. Same thing, commit to it. And now I can go back to our main area. And now I've got those ch those changes, and I've I've avoided it in this area. Um, now I'm looking at this, and I see a couple areas. I see like a little spot here, and I see a telephone wire running through my sky. I am going to go back to my stack that has the healing. I'm going to go down, tap on it, and I'm going to go to the adjusters because I'm going to make some additional adjustments there. So now I can go in here, enlarge this, and take my finger and wipe out that line. And there's also kind of a, a little bit of a spot. It's probably a cloud, but it looks like a spot, so I'm going to take it out. So now, click OK to that. So now we've just made this adjustment. Now here's a quirky little thing about Snapseed. You notice all of the adjustments above this one are grayed out. That means they're off. They're not being applied. And if you click this arrow and go back, it's only going to be applying the ones that are active here. So to ensure that these are all active, you have to tap one by one on each of them. And now you've turned them all back on. Now when you hit this arrow and you come back to Snapseed, all of your adjustments have been applied. So, um, there you have it. Um, I mean, so now let's just look at this. There's our before image. Notice how it's crooked and it's got all the debris in it. And there's our final image. Now, I might not stop here. I might go on and add a grunge filter or I might go on and make this a painting. Um, which would require taking it into some of my other favorite apps. But I might stop here, too, and just call it a day uh, with this image.
So let's assume that's the case. I'm going to go up here to the save icon. So because so far we haven't saved anything. We've only committed to the changes within Snapseed. So I'm going to click the save icon. And down here, I'm going to make sure that I save a copy. I, I don't use either of the other two options here, but you want to save a copy, the one in the middle. And what that's doing is saving your image to your camera roll, but it hasn't affected the original image at all. And what's well, that's interesting. Wouldn't you know I'd have an error like that when I'm in the middle of a tutorial? I've never had that one before. Try that again. So, um, there it goes. Um, so, the other thing that's interesting about this, you can go back out and open this same image again in Snapseed and all of your five stacks of adjustments will be there. So you can go back, open this image again, and pick up where you left off, adding new adjustments or removing adjustments from uh, from the the one you've the image you've already created. So if we go out to our camera roll. There's our image that we just did, and the original is still in the album where I left it, uh, where I had put it before. Um, so, pretty cool. So the other thing I wanted to show you with Snapseed um, that that you can do with masking, um, and let's go back to Snapseed. By the way, one of the ways that I constantly go back to Snapseed is um, I just swipe down in the center of my screen, and it's if I just used it, it's right there. And if it's not, I just type in S and 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 the search feature finds it for me. I do that with all my apps. Just a quick way of getting around. So I'm going to open Snapseed, and I'm going to open here, and I'm going to go out to get some stuff from my device, and I'm going to go down to the album I created with the stuff that I want. And I'm going to grab this image. So, and I'm going to click Use, and there it is in Snapseed. And this is a shot that I just took down in Cuba recently. Um, the, the old cars that are used as taxis, they line up near the hotels. This one's in front of Park Central Hotel uh, near, the, near the Prado. Um, and so I've got an image that I like, but I, I didn't wasn't able to crop it in the camera very well, or I didn't at the time. Now, typically I try and crop in the camera as much as possible, but I really didn't with this one. So I'm going to go ahead and start by cropping this image down. And I want to eliminate these two people and see if I can just get kind of tight on the cars. So I'm going to go and tap the pencil. And this time I'm going to start with the crop tool. And it's defaulting to the last choice I made, which, which was the 5-4 aspect ratio. Um, but across the bottom, you have a whole host of different ones. If you want, you can do a free crop, which means by tapping on that, you can just move this any, any which way you want. It doesn't, have, it doesn't adhere to any particular aspect ratio. You can always get back to the original by tapping on the original button. And then you have all these other options that are um, predetermined aspect ratios that you can choose. I'm going to try the 5-4. That's probably not enough. Um, so I'm going to start with 5-4, but then I'm going to crop in until I can get rid of that guy and get rid of that woman. So uh, I don't like that either, but something like that. Um, so here's a case where I normally would never crop this much of an image out because I'm reducing the size of an already small iPhone image to begin with. But because I like this picture and I wanted to try this, I'm going to I'm going to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark and commit to that, knowing that I'm going to have a small file. Um, the first thing I'm going to try and do, well, actually, I'm going to go back here and crop that a little bit better because so I went back into my crop. I'm going to hit the slider so I can recrop, and I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit, get that top out of there, and maybe get that guy. So let's just get real dramatic about it. 
All right, so there's my crop. I got rid of my people. I got these cool looking cars here. I'm going to go ahead and commit to that. And now I'm going to start going through my, my standard process again. So I go down to the pencil. I'm going to start. I'm going to go really fast here. I'm going to start with tune image. I'm going to go down to ambiance. I'm going to run it up to 100, which is whoa, way too saturated. So I'm going to back it off just maybe down to 75. That's okay. I want this red to really pop because what I'm going to do is transform this image so that only the red appears and the rest is black and white. So I'm going to go down to highlights and I'm going to drop the highlights a little bit. Look at how the detail comes out in the yellow uh, in the yellow car when I drop that down. Um, then I'm going to go to shadows. Same thing. I'm going to darken my shadows just a little bit. Look at that lower left corner giving me kind of a little vignetted area there. I'm going to go with that. Then I'm going to go down to warmth and I'm going to warm it just a tiny bit. So now if we look at this, look at this, look at the raindrops on the hood. There's before and there's after. So we've he heightened the um, some of the well, not yet. Hold on a second. So I'm going to go ahead and say yes to that. And then I'm going to go back to my pencil. And now I'm going to go into my sharpening and structure details. So I'm going to move it over to about 21 and sharpen again to about 21. And um, now let's look at, look at this again. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. So we've we've really got just a tiny bit of of uh, structure and sharpening in, in those raindrops. And then the last thing I'm going to do again is tonal contrast. Now again this is one that comes in defaulting to 30, 50, 30. I'm going to look at it. There's before, there's after. There's before and there's after. I'm going to go with it just like it is and I'm going to commit to that change. So now I've made four changes here. If we go up to the little white box, you can see that we cropped it, we adjusted the tune image, we sharpened it, and then we um, hit the tonal contrast a little bit too. So now what I want to do next, I'm going to add another tune image layer. So I'm going to hit the pencil. We've already got one tune image layer going, but I'm going to add another one. It's okay. I'm going to tap that. And this time I'm going to go to saturation. So saturation is what allows me to add or remove color. If I go all the way to the left, I can drop the color out of the image. Now I can also go up here to contrast and increase the contrast a little bit um, and play around with some of the other, you know, drop the highlights, maybe the shadows just a little and see how I can make some um, affect the black and white. So I really like that tonality of the black and white there, just like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark to commit to that change. Well now what I want to do is bring the red back in the car. So what I'm going to do is go up here to the little box with our stacks, our layers, and I'm going to go to the tune image that we just did, and I'm going to select the brush and there's our picture without any of the black and white. So I want the black and white to be everywhere except the car. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, paint the whole thing in, which says make it all black and white. Am I, saying, am I doing this right? Am I backwards? I always get backwards with this. So then um, I'm going to take this down to zero down here and now I'm going to come in and remove the black and white from this area and I hit the I hit this area back here so I want to go back down and increase using the arrows at the bottom here I'm going to increase that back up to 100 and go in here and paint out I want black and white back there. So it's pretty close. Now you can see I might get in closer here to the, the red so the yellow is not showing at all. So now I'm going to commit to the change 
and there's our image. So this is another way to use masking to affect, you know, create this cool effect. Um, it's just the same concept as using masking to avoid sharpening a sky. In this case, we're just taking out the black and white from here. In the other image, we were taking out the sharpening. Okay, um, let's see. So let's go back to um, the camera roll. I'm going to go back to my little folder, my album here with these pictures. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I think we have time for one more here. Um, I'm going to select this image right here. Now, I'm going to show you a different way to get to Snapseed um, than we've been doing. So, right now, um, we are looking at our camera roll, and I want to work with this picture right here. Well, I've already gone through the camera roll and found the picture. So, if I tap on it, and then go down and touch the share icon down here, I get the option to copy right here. So I'm going to say copy, and it's put that picture now, or that image, into a buffer. So now I can go back to the Snapseed, open it up, I can click open up here, and because I haven't saved this image, it's asking me, is that okay? And I'm going to say, yeah, that's okay. And then down here I have the option to paste the image I just copied. So I'm going to tap paste, and there's the, the new image that we're going to work with. So it's just a way of moving around quickly in Snapseed. I'm going to turn this sideways, and hopefully it's a little bigger. Um, so again, this is one of the, let's start with this image. We'll go through this one more time. I'm looking at the, um, what needs to be changed or anything need to be taken out. My horizon, I think, is okay. It's a little hillside there, so, but I'm looking at the perpendicular um, wall, so I think that's in pretty good shape. What I do have over here, though, is some stuff on the side that I want to I want to get rid of. Um, so I'm going to go and start with cropping. I'm going to go to my crop icon, and I'm going to try a five four crop on this. And when I do that, it allows me to kind of move things over. I can use my rule of thirds grid to guide me. I've, I want my horizon down here, not in the dead center, and I also want this to be kind of right around this intersection right here. I don't, I don't adhere to the rule of thirds for all things, but I think they're good guidelines sometimes. So now I'm going to go down in this corner, and I want to eliminate some of this noise, and I'm just going to crop it out. I could try and, and use content aware to remove it, but I'm going to just kind of crop out that area. So again, I know I'm reducing my image size, but I'm okay with it. Partly the reason I'm okay with it is because this is a vivid HDR image, and it's saving a much larger file than just the standard 8 or 12 megapixel file that you get with just the uh, resident camera. So I'm still going to have a pretty decent file size when I'm done here. So I've cropped that out. So there's really nothing else I need to remove or anything like that, so I'm going to go back to my pencil. I'm going to go to Tune Image. I'm going to go to Ambiance again, and I'm going to crank it all the way up to 100. And I'm going to look at that real carefully. There's before, and there's after, and I'm good with that. I'm going to go down to Highlights, and I'm going to take the highlights into the negative and watch my sky. So you can see at about 50%, there's before and there's after, so I've got some real nice detail in my sky now. I'm going to go with that. And then next I'm going to go down to shadows, and on the shadows I'm looking at the face of my barn here. If I take my shadows into the negative, look what happens. I can darken parts of the barn, but still keep some highlights here. And I, I like the drama that that brings in, so it's just taking it down maybe nine, 10, maybe there's about 20, that's probably too much. So there's before, and there's after. So now I'm going to go down one more to warmth, and I want to warm up the weed field in front of the barn just a tiny bit, not very much, but if I take it up to maybe uh, about 10 or so, 
and again, this is all just by looking. So there's before and there's after. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and accept those tune image changes. And now I'm going to go to details. And I'm going to adjust my structure up to about 21 or 2. And I'm going to do my sharpening up to about 21 or 2. And now, again, I don't want to sharpen my sky. So I'm going to mask it out. So I'm going to go up here to the 3, tap on the 3, tap on details, choose the brush. And I'm telling Snapseed, sharpen just this area that I'm touching. Leave the sky alone. And I'm going to say commit to that. Now I'm going to go and do my tonal contrast adjustment. Again, it comes in already adjusted at 30, 50, 30. I'm going to look at before. I'm going to look at after, before, and after. I like what it's doing down here to the barn, but I don't like what it's doing to the clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and accept it, and I'm going to do another mask. Hit the brush and tell it to do the tonal adjustment just on the barn in the foreground. And there I'm done. So there we have it. Now, one other thing that I like to do a lot with Snapseed, and or, but not just Snapseed, but with other apps, I really enjoy sometimes adding a vignette. Um, I'm not sure this would be the kind of uh, image that I would add one to, but let's just try it here. So a vignette, if you think about the concept that people, your eye goes to what's sharpest and what's brightest in an image. So if you have a darker perimeter, you're naturally going to look more at the subject of the image in the center. Well, Snapseed has a vignette option here. If we tap on it, and you notice the blue dot in the center, and I can take my fingers and pinch, and you see the, the radius of the circle. I can control, um, control that. The area inside the circle is, is called the inner um, brightness, and the area outside the circle is the outer brightness. So what can happen then is to set your vignette, you slide your finger up and down, and if you go to the outer brightness, it's, it defaults to 50, but you can drag it down, and look, you can make it very, very dark. Now, clearly, that's more dark than I want, but I want to show you. And then you can adjust the size of that vignette by just sliding your fingers. Now, you can also go into the inner brightness, and you can increase that a little bit if you want to increase the contrast between those two areas. And then I'd go back out. Let's just try and get this toned down where we want. Usually, to me, the best vignette is the one you barely see. Um, in most cases. So that may, I don't know, that may not be what I would do with that image, but you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and say, commit to that. And now here's our image with a slight vignette around the perimeter. Um, and uh, I can go ahead and save that. Now, one other thing, I'm going to, uh, you know, I mentioned in here, we haven't talked at all about the filters that are in here. Um, if I open up um, Pencil and I go down, you have a whole host of filters in Snapseed that allow you to do all kinds of wacky things with the image. Um, you, you've got um, a vintage, a grunge, you can change to black and white, there's a noir kind of look, you can do grainy film. One of the ones that I often um, use in here is grunge. And I'm just going to, because this particular image, I think, kind of lends itself to that, I'm going to go ahead and select the grunge option. Now, notice how it just defaults to one of the, I think there are like 1,500 styles. And if I, it's this one's style 400, but if I drag my finger across, notice how the numbers are changing? Each one of those is a different style. So those styles have to do with tone. They have to do with how big the vignette is, a host of things like that. So you can see how the tone is changing, the color is changing. Then you also have this little box right here next to the style. If you tap on that, you've got five different preset textures that you can select. 
Um, so I'll just pick that one. And now as you as you slide your finger and move through the styles, you're getting that particular texture applied to all the, all the styles. So let's say you come close. Here's one that you kind of like a little bit, but it's way too dark and it's not right. Well, you take your finger on the screen and scroll up and down, and you can affect all of these different aspects of that style. So the brightness, we might brighten it a little bit. We might um, drop the con I don't know, drop the contrast a little bit. Um, we might maybe saturate it a little more. I don't know what you might do with it. And then the texture strength. This is where you can adjust how intense that that texture is. So if we back it off, it's we're losing the texture almost completely. Or if we bring it up, you've got real intense. So you can adjust along there where, you know, how much of that texture you want. So I'd say okay to that. And now as I look at that, I'm thinking, man, that vignette is a little heavy handed. So if I go back up here to my stacks, tap on that, I can go back down to my vignette right here. Whoops. And go in here and use the sliders. And I can increase the outer brightness and soften my vignette almost to nothing because I think that other filter also had a vignette so now now it's mostly the, the, the vignette from the grunge app so now there's our image so there's before whoops there's before when we started and there's where we ended up with this real you know cool vintage image um, so I'll go ahead and save that. Well, thanks everyone for uh, for listening. And um, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at raddrew at gmail dot com, or um, check out my website at um, raddrewphotography dot com. I'm also on Facebook. I'm the only Rad Drew out there, so you can uh, look me up that way and uh, take a look at. Um, my personal site as well as my business site there. Um, thanks again. Uh, see you next time. Bye.